Hi there, it's Marzena. Before we get back to my regular doll shenanigans, I have one more non-doll related project to show you. It was supposed to be a collaboration, but long story short, I bit more than I could chew and here I am, late as always. But without further ado, let's print and paint a resin figurine of a Diablo 3 barbarian girl as a gift for my husband. Let's dive in. My husband loves Diablo games. I've already made him a doll figurine version of Andariel from Diablo 2, and this time I wanted to give him a proper resin figurine. He usually plays as a barbarian chick, so this model was perfect for the project. I purchased it from cgtrader.com and prepared the files for the printing. And here came my first my bed because I made way too many supports. Mind that I approached this project as a total noob. I've only printed and painted one resin figurine before and it came in a one solid pre-supported piece, not like in bazillion pieces to support before and assemble after printing. Anyway, we have to learn our lessons somehow, so I printed all my unknowingly badly prepared files on my Anacubic Photon Mono X just because it's my bigger printer. Then I washed all the printed pieces in my wash and cure machine and did a second no-no, cured them with all the supports still attached. I thought that removing the supports will be less messy this way, but I was wrong. Not only there was still mess everywhere, the cured supports were very hard to remove, left pretty nasty indentations and with some pieces I wasn't even able to remove them at all. One of the prints even destroyed my fab film in my resin tank and I needed to replace it. I was a bit demotivated by all of this, but fortunately I have a friend on the other side of the globe that I could ask for help. So the resin queen herself took my sorry ass on Discord and explained to me step by step how she prepares her files for printing. Thanks to Leona's help, I didn't throw the towel yet and repeated the printing process with more successful results this time. And I finally got the satisfying ASMR cracking sound. Ah, pure joy. Here you can see how heavily supported the first prints were and how impossible it was to remove all those supports compared to how lightly supported the second try was. So remember, I know I will, don't overdo the supports on your print files and always remove the supports before curing. They will be softer and they will make less damage to your print. Lesson learned. Okay, all the pieces were printed and they were ready for the step 2. Some of the prints still didn't end up perfect. I hollowed the bigger pieces while I was preparing the files so I could save on some printing resin and I guess I still need to learn how to properly support the inside of the models. But it was nothing that I couldn't fix with some epoxy sculpt. Leona told me that hollowed pieces have tendency to distort over time, so the best solution is to fill them with regular epoxy resin. So I did exactly that. I let the resin cure for 3 days and it was time for the worst part. Preparing for painting, aka sanding, fitting, more sanding and more sanding. 
Even though I used all kinds of sandpapers, files and tiny milling cutters on my micromotor, it was a nightmare to make the surfaces smooth without destroying the details of the model. So I listened to Leona once again and I bought some sanding sponges that I am totally in love with now. And I also treated myself with this sanding device. Because I still wasn't satisfied with the smoothness of some of the pieces, I decided to do something that I have never actually seen on resin printing videos. So it might be a forbidden practice. Leona, please don't hate me if I am doing another no-no here. I took the same resin that I used for printing, spread a thin layer over the whole piece and cured it under an UV lamp. After wiping it with alcohol, it finally looked nice. It could ruin the details on the model, but it didn't. It did a pretty good job, so I repeated on all the pieces. To strengthen the connection between the torso and pelvis, I pinned them together with a piece of wire. I also made a pinning on the stand pieces. Look, I didn't really know what I was doing. That was my first time putting a resin figurine together, so there might have been many mistakes that I made on the way and didn't even notice. If you want to see a pro in action, I highly recommend checking Leona's channel. I left the wolf's tail unpinned, cause it started cracking, and I also pinned the horn to the butcher's head. It was time to get rid of those cracks. I ordered two types of Tamiya putty. The polyester one I had to order from China, cause I couldn't find it anywhere closer and Leona really recommended it. For the wolf, the butcher and the stand, I used the cheaper basic type. It was pretty easy to use. Just squeezed it out of the tube and filled the gaps with it. The polyester putty was the one I was more afraid of. It has two components that you mix together. I wanted the pieces to be separated, so I used Vaseline. And I also used alcohol to wipe off any mistakes. I put the Vaseline on the parts I didn't want the putty to stick to and mixed a small amount of the forbidden mustard, how Leona likes to call it. The putty cures quite fast and you are able to cut off the excesses with an exacto knife and separate the pieces. Worked pretty great and the crack was no more. Once again, I know my work here looks very messy and I am sure that I made tons of mistakes, but I promise to do better next time. And for now, well, at least it works as it should, I guess. Now let's go back to sanding. I didn't pin the entire figurine, cause I was just too afraid of cracking the hard printing resin. But I needed to make a tiny pin on the axis handle after the connection broke during working with putty. It was nerve wracking to do, but it worked, so maybe with a next figurine I will do the pinning on all the pieces. I gave my model pieces a nice bubble bath to get rid of the dust and any chemical residue. Rinsed well and let them dry. Leona told me that if I am too afraid of pinning, I should at least make sure that there will be no paint on the connections. So I covered those parts with liquid mask. Then it was time for priming. With the help of my airbrush and white paint, I made some pre-highlights. It is called zenithal highlighting, I guess. I just decided that I want my model to be hit by the light from above, 
and I sprayed the white accordingly. Because I felt very intimidated by this project, I started the actual painting with the butcher's head. It is a big element that is not mandatory to the model itself, so I could try some techniques on it and if it wouldn't work out, I could just throw it away. I started with a purple base color and then did some layering with this zombie flesh from Green Stuff World. I mostly covered the highlighted areas with it. I am using my wet palette here and it's very helpful to keep my paints moist. Looking good so far. I could continue with the lighter colors. Layering is a miniature painting technique where you're just building up your colors from darkest to the lightest. Still looking good. Let's add some gangrene. Also painted the tusks and teeth, tongue and lips. Time for glazing. I try to not use inks or washes on my wet palette, because they can go through your paper and sponge like crazy. This wash made my butcher look more fleshy and less greenish. I painted the wounds and added some coagulated blood into them. Also added some finishing highlights. His eyes I painted black with a tiny dots of white catch lights. A little bit of brown wash to the teeth and tusks and I wouldn't be myself if I wouldn't add some blood streaks. We love gore here. On some artworks I saw the red spots on Butcher's neck and back of his head, so I painted them too. Shame that I haven't noticed it before, all the layering and glazing, cause I could incorporate them better into the skin, but well. I secured the head with plastic wrap, tape and liquid mask and went straight to the horns. I used varieties of browns and creamy acrylics. It took some time, so let's use some editing magic here. I spray the horns with Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat varnish and I added some shadows with black pan pastel. It did make some difference. When I finished, I fixed it under a layer of MSC and then glossed it with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, but I kinda lost the footage of that. Anyway, to the centerpiece, which is our barbarian girl. Let's call her Barb. I mixed a proper skin color and airbrushed it over all the skin parts of the model. I was a little bit too scared to use glazing or layering on the girl, so I did what I know. Sprayed the pieces with MSC and used pan pastels for highlights, shadings and body blushing.
I also added blue markings on Barb's body. Face was a little more intimidating because it was so tiny in comparison to dolls that I usually work on. And if you know me, you know what I think about restricting face sculpts. But of course, this is not even similar to doll customization, and I needed to work with everything I've got. Sculpted lashes, eyebrows, and such. And in a tiny scale, of course. But overall, I think it didn't end up quite as bad. Of course, Barb had to be a redhead. After the head, it was time for the fur, armor and weapons. I must say, those chrome metal paints from Green Staff World are the best metallics I have ever used. I'm not showing the process on every single piece here, cause there were so many pieces. I definitely bit more than I could chew with this one. To be honest, I've been working on this model since January. You can see me at the beginning of the video wearing sweaters and warm woolen socks. It was supposed to be a Valentine's gift for my husband at first. Then I wanted to finish it for Diablo 4 premiere. But obviously I failed here too. But I guess launch of the first Diablo 4 season had to be enough. Doll customization is a lot of work but at least I already know what I am doing. At least most of the time. Here almost everything was new to me. But even if it took a lot of time, I did my best. I made a small test on a failed print to see if I'll be able to restore the metallic shine after spraying the pieces with matte varnish. I should have thought about it before I painted all the pieces, cause no, the shine was definitely gone. So what could I do? I secured my paint job of the metallic parts with a gloss varnish and after it dried, cover those pieces with liquid mask. Then, finally, I could spray it with Mr. Super Clear. To the fun part, removing all the masking that I just apply and also cleaning all the connection parts. When all the pieces were clean, I glossed the leather stripes on the legs, arms and also added some wetness to the eyes and lips. And Barb was done. The last thing before I could assemble everything, the wolf. This little sucker took me like 16 hours straight to paint off camera, just to end up too ugly so I covered it up again with white paint. 
I wanted it to be a white wolf. But then I came up with something cooler. I decided to customize the wolf and turned it into the Mephisto from Diablo 4. Sorry for the spoiler. Now this was finally my domain. I marked where I wanted the skull to be showing and curved into the model with my micromotor. Holding a vacuum cleaner on my lap helps a lot with avoiding a total mess because the resin dust is just something else, I must tell you. Try to be careful around the canines. I rinsed all the dust and when my wolf was dried I started the sculpting phase. It is so fun for me that suddenly sculpting turned out to be something that I'm comfortable with. On the next day, when the epoxy cured, I sprayed my boy with a black primer, mixed some grey acrylics and dry brushed the entire fur. I went from the darkest grey, slowly adding more and more white to the mix. When the fur was done, I painted the skull with beige acrylic paint and the gums with pink one. Then I covered everything with some brown washes. It made the carvings pop out nicely. The eyes I painted black with a teeny tiny catch lights. I added some blood to the edges and wounds and the wolf was almost done. It just needed some matte varnish and gloss here and there. The model itself was great, but now it looks even cooler in my opinion. And it ties the Diablo 3 Barbarian with Diablo 4 Wolf perfectly. To the stand! I sprayed it with black primer and covered it with magic dry brushing. The bottom of the stand was pretty rough, so to prevent it from scratching the hell out of our bookshelf, I decided to glue it on a piece of thin EVA foam. I covered both pieces, the foam and the bottom of the stand, with contact cement and glued them together. Then I cut it carefully with an X-Acto knife. So we had all the pieces ready and with the magic of super glue. Cool. She only needed her companion and her prey. And the barbarian project was done. Wrong! I couldn't leave the stand being boring like that. Firstly, I glued a variety of grass tufts here and there. Then I spread the snow paste unevenly cause our girl just gives me the vibes of playing in the snow, you know? Anyway, 
To push it even further, I used to liquid frost. On the next day, I could finally add the last detail, the blood. I mixed some tacky glue with red paint and made some drippings, splatters and other nasty, weirdly satisfying stuff. And now, finally, Barb the Barbarian is really done. Ugh. As I said, this model was on my workbench for over 7 months now. It is always nerve-wracking to work on something new, and trust me when I say it, figurine painting and doll customization are completely different things. I was so close to throwing the towel with this project so many times. But thank gods I had Leona to guide me in those hard times. It's really good to have the resin queen on your side. Thank you so much, Leona. I am quite happy with the finished piece. It's far from being perfect, but it's just my second. And even though this project was a little demotivating pain in the butt sometimes, I am sure that I will paint some more resin figurines again in the future. After all, there's still plenty of techniques that I want to learn. For now though, I will go back to my dolls. And a new doll figurine is already in the making. So what do you think about my step out of my comfort zone resin figurine? Did you play Diablo 4 already? Are you planning on playing it in the new season? Me and my husband will definitely play. By the way, he said he loved the figurine, so I am happy. If you enjoyed this video, and I hope you did even though it was something a bit different, please give Barb a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, click the bell button for the future notifications and feel free to leave a comment. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Jak mama ma zrobić zdjęcia? Hmm. No cóż. Ty jesteś najładniejszą figurką.